This is the start of day one. Morning, everybody. We're airborne. We track towards uh, Wawa. So, I think we're good to go. with the Raven here. Um, we are uh, hoping to take off tomorrow morning bright and early. So the first leg of the flight is going to be driving to Wawa. So it's uh, like uh, 5, 520, 535 in the morning and uh, we've got a flight plan filed and we are ready to roll. And it's a beautiful morning to go flying. This is the start of day one adventure to cover most of the province of Ontario and we're going to make it to as far as uh, Pembroke this evening, weather permitting and uh, Reagan Holden. Flight plan's all filed and uh, first, uh, Wawa next, next. Next, next stop is Wawa and there's their captain for the, our adventure, that's Captain Bill. Anyway, we're going to keep you updated en route, uh, I'm sure we'll get lots of uh, nice footage around the north shore of Lake Superior and uh, We'll see you all in a little bit. There's a, there's a serious lack of uh, couples in here in six years. Well, that's something you can work on. Uh, you can build some one. carbon fiber ones. The next one. Yeah, the next one. So here we go, bright and early in the morning of July 4th, 2023. First leg of our flight, driving to Wawa. The weather this morning was perfect. Takeoff was smooth, and there wasn't even a hint of turbulence all the way up to 7,500 feet. Days like this are just made for flying. Couldn't ask for a nicer day. Although we did have some weather grief on our trip, the first day was pretty smooth. So, morning everybody, we're airborne out of dry and we're uh, en route to uh, Wawa. 7,500 feet, being still awake, that's pretty good. Now <laughs> yeah, you're doing good. And we're burning around six gallons an hour, six and a half gallons an hour, so that's good. Open our fuel economy. Uh, we're hoping to make it to Wawa without a fuel stop. We'll tune in from time to time through the flight and keep you informed of what's going on. All right, welcome back folks. Ripping along here, we got a ground speed of 100, 145 knots, 7,500, right on course. Dean's nailing the uh, nailing the uh, track here and the altitude. So those guys, and uh, we get we got flight following for this flight. So we called up the Winnipeg Center on 132. Hang on a second, no, 132. We called up Winnipeg Center. Got flight following for this flight, which is something that I hadn't done before, um, and it was uh, relatively painless. The guy was uh, pretty easy to get along with. So far, Emmett's pretty happy. We'll see how he, uh, see how he reacts to our landing. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't bring a water. No. Told you. Bladder. Oh, yeah. Are you going to bladder the side of the hamster? Yeah. Gerbil. 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 Okay. Yeah, she's a beauty morning. A little smoky, a little lazy, but uh, turned out all right. We are now, uh, we're past Ignis. We're uh, like 30 miles uh, 30 miles past Ignis already, we're getting, uh, in the interest of uh, self-preservation, we decided to file a, a flight plan, kind of a dog-like course to, uh, to Marathon, keep us over some population, because there's some awful, awful deserted woods north of the runway, north, north of our track, so. But hitting that with your legs. Oh, that's me with the... Yeah, it is you. <laughs> Making me look bad on Sorry, camera. buddy. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna switch field bags here. Yeah, I don't need no help to look bad, right? Still going in the right direction anyway, Abel. Eh, Seems to be, yep. Yep, the highway should be off that way. Yep. Somewhere over there, you can see the road there. Right, right. underneath us. If we're high enough, if we conked them, we'll probably get somewhere near it where it wouldn't be too far to walk, so you can hitchhike. Yeah, over there, all that mess over there would be lactamalac. Yep. So that big lake in front of us got to be 
That's part of Lagda Malak, I think, as well. Okay, so that way over there must be the north end of Dog Lake then. I would be uh, completely satisfied if the weather was like this all the way down and all the way back. Yeah. This doesn't get much better. It's pretty smooth. It would be nice if it was a little brighter, though, going over the North Shore. It's a little hazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, ground speed's ripping along 144 knots. Ish. Yeah, you got the highway on your side. I got nothing but nothing to look at but trees and lakes. Yeah. Sunshine. A whole lot of nothing. A whole lot of, whole lot of Canada. I do get a kick out of some of the uh, Southern Ontario uh, p pilots. That they, oh, we went way up north to Sault Ste. Marie. Or, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, that's, uh, yeah. You're, you're, you're at the edge of way up north there. Yeah, we got to fly for three hours to get to way up north. Yeah, we fly for three hours, we're still up north. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is, uh, it's amazing how big this province is. Huge. And we're stuck off at the west end of it, so. Well, there's worse places a person could be, Bill. That's for sure, yeah. How many uh, gallons of gas have we used so far, according to my gizmo? It's saying we've only used... 5.7 gallons of gas. Even with all my zigzagging? Even that's with, it. Even with the zigzagging. Hey. If you zoom out on the uh, four flight far enough, yeah. you can't see the zigzag. We're mint. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. Um, uh, we're rolling again, by the way. Throwing the camera on there. Um, so, we got uh, Thunder Bay is uh, pretty much in the rear view mirror here now. We are uh, just coming up on the, the, the north shore of Lake Superior, the big lake. Uh, we've made our first turn uh, over Dog Lake, and now uh, the plan is to climb pretty much due east. Pretty much due east. Black Flight 704, uh, Winnipeg Center identified. Turn left, heading 160, climb flight level 250. Left heading 160, climb flight level 250, Black Flight 704. That's correct. Alright, so the plan for now is to fly pretty much due east to Marathon, cross over the field of Marathon, and then start our. Uh, a little bit southeasterly track towards uh, Wawa. So we are looking at the uh, great big Lake Superior here. We're coming up on uh, Red Rock Bay or Nipigon Bay. Smoke conditions are about the same. This is showing 116 miles to uh, Marathon. And we're 116 miles to Marathon. Okay. And what's up? So, uh, Dean pretty much flew the first leg, and we were right on course and altitude the whole way. Now I'm flying, and we're up and down and all over the bloody map here a little bit, but uh, yeah, we're close. Where's we're close. the bags at, Bill? The bags? <laughs> how, come you, how come you're still awake? I've been up 7,500 feet for a while here now. Oh, don't tell, don't don't worry. I had my moments there. I wasn't oh, sure, okay. but we hung on. So yeah, there's Thunder Bay way over there. Actually, way back there now. Starting to get a little bit of high cloud cover, but uh, still not enough to block out the sun. All right. Well, we're uh, we're flying right over a, a big body of water right now. Big uh, bay at uh, Lake Superior. So engine should quit any second now. Bill. It's gonna quit. It's gonna quit right over the water. I know. Bill, <laughs> but we had this discussion already. Uh, well, that's why we're we're hugging the North Shore because I'm, yeah. I'm a big chicken. I didn't. Absolutely. I could have went in a straight line to Wawa and saved almost 15 minutes. No. Yeah. No. But that's uh, uh, yeah. There's no floats on this thing. No. Even with a float plane, you wouldn't want to be landing out in that body of water. But anyways, here we are. We're past Thunder Bay. We're on the North Shore of uh, Lake Superior. Ipican is just over there. Yep. Uh, looks like we're coming up in a little bit of uh, a layer of cloud up ahead. So we may have to uh, drop down underneath it. And I suspect at some point in the next not too distant future, I'm going to get a call from uh, the Winnipeg, from Winnipeg uh, Center uh, to switch to Toronto Center. Hey, everybody. Hey, that worked better than... Uh, uh, than uh, yeah, the usual. So we've just started our descent into Wawa. They're showing about 36 miles back. We're just through 6,000. Heading downhill. Estimating field about uh, 16 minutes. 
Just even losing that thousand feet give us much better visibility. We can see the ground uh, far better now. Uh, wind in uh, Wawa is like three knots with your three zero zero at three. Nice, nice and uh, gentle breeze. So we're going to join a downwind. Or we're going to get to zero three for the runway. We'll have a bit of a left crosswind, but. Yeah, so it was about here where my audio crapped out on me. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Uh, but uh, yeah, we continued our descent into Wawa, and unfortunately, the audio took a dump. So unfortunately, our good-natured banter going back and forth uh, never made the uh, the uh, footage here. But uh, we carried on with our descent uh, into Wawa, and uh, here comes the landing. Dean was going to shoot the landing with one of the GoPros, but uh, he thought he'd try out the ball cam view. I told him I was going to edit that out, but yeah, it was just too funny to leave in there. So here we are, turning final on the wall. So here we are on the ground in Wawa. The first leg of the trip is in the bag, and uh, we're gonna get some gas here. Next stop will be Gore Bay. Wawa has a nice little airport, nice little uh, uh, smooth runway there. Um, they have uh, uh, fuel available there. The fellow that ran the FBO there was very friendly, uh, had no problems getting fuel at all. Um, we met the uh, Wawa airport security. Um, very intimidating looking fellow, but uh, actually he was he was just a big puppy. So we fueled up here, uh, got ready to go, had a little snack and a bathroom break, and uh, got ready to take off and head on to the next leg, which would be Gore Bay. Just on the phone here with, uh, I'm on hold to hell with uh, Ottawa Flight Services. The call will be answered by the first available specialist. Once to return to the main menu, press zero. Good morning. Good morning, how are you today? I'm good. I would like to file a VFR flight plan, if I could. Okay, let's turn to the aircraft. Uh, Charlie Golf Hotel Mike Bravo. Golf Hotel Mike Bravo, RB6, departing uh, where? Uh, we are in Wawa right now. Let's see why okay. uh, ZE. Uh, ZE would be Gourmet. That's, oh, sorry, that's, a, that's the destination. Sorry, ZE is the destination. Okay. Wawa. What time are in Wawa? Uh, in the next five minutes. All right, 1421. And the altitude? Uh, 3,500. All right, you're going direct to uh, Corvée? Uh, we're going to follow, we're going to basically kind of follow the Trans Canada down towards uh, Sault Ste. Marie and then follow the North Shore over uh, like... Uh, uh, over the North Channel and then into Corvée. And then into Corvée, yeah. So we're going to follow the road a little bit. Okay. Taking the scenic route. Uh, it's going to take me about an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, fuel drift? Uh, four, point, well, four hours and 15 minutes. Okay, people on board? Two. And who's the pilot? Uh, William Brisson. All right, so Golf Hotel Mike Bravo, VFR off Wawa 1421, Zulip to three and a half. Taking the Trans Canada down to Sault Ste. Marie, North Channel, across over to Corbet. One hour and one five hundred, sound good? Sounds like about everything's good there, eh? Why are there no tips? Uh, checked them already. All right, we've got you all far the way. Don't forget to call us when you're down, okay? Very best, thanks for help. Have a great day. You too. Bye. <laughs> yeah, we, we need to write back his number down somewhere. So I don't look like an idiot every time you ask me for contact information. Yeah. Well, no, sometimes it's good that you know you seem like an idiot because then they're a little more patient. Well, yeah. there's that too. Yeah. You know, if you it's look just an act, honest folks. It's just an <laughs> act. <laughs> I forgot that was on. Oh yeah, no, that's on. Edit, mm -hmm. edit. When in doubt, edit it out. Uh, you know what? I don't mind leaving the stuff in that makes me look dumb. Yeah. Well, so far I must. It's called reality TV. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I must admit, though, every time, both times you've called flight service, they're very accommodating. Yes. Very patient yeah. and very professional. All right, I think we're ready to. Uh, I think we're good to go. Commence aviation here. 
we're all clear. We're all buttoned up. Your seatbelts are all in. Seatbelts good. Yep. Okay. We did our walk around checks. Oil's good. Fuel's rich. topped up. Nice Both caps are solid. Going. Airport is right parallel to the Trans Canada Highway there. I've driven this route a few times. I've driven past Wawa, stopped for gas, and uh, from driving to Wawa, it's a, usually it's 10 hours and change of driving. It's a it's a full day's drive getting there. Uh, and Dean and I, we managed to do it in uh, just a little over two. That's uh, that's the way to travel. That's for sure. So this leg was going to be considerably shorter, uh, just a short flight from Wawa down to Gore Bay, uh, nice little airport in Gore Bay, and uh, Robert is the guy to talk to there. I uh, had uh, made some inquiries, uh, gave him a phone call, and we had actually booked the airport vehicle. They have a they have a courtesy car at the at the Gore Bay airport, and uh, Robert was uh, kind enough to book that for us, so we could uh, run into town and have lunch. So. Wall off to Gore Bay was not, uh, uh, I don't think it was an hour. It was a reasonably short flight. Climbing out of Wawa, there's some, actually some pretty hilly terrain there you got to watch. There's some, some big rocks and lots of trees. Uh, and you also have to be very mindful. There's, a, there's quite a few towers right around the airport there too. So uh, uh, you need to pay attention to where they are so we don't have any unexpected surprises by running into a tower. So here we are, southbound from Wawa, following the Trans-Canada Highway. Takes us by many of the windmills north of Sault Ste. Marie. And then we're going east, over the North Channel, separating Manitoulin Island from the mainland. Alright, uh, we're chugging along, we just went over, uh, what was that? Blind River. Blind River, yeah. Blind River is out there somewhere. We just went over Blind River. And uh, now we're getting ready to commit here. We're gonna we're gonna cross the North Channel. So we're gonna do the water crossing. So we climbed up uh, to 5,500 feet. So a little safety margin. We got a little safety margin, and I'm thinking if we just kind of follow those islands around there. Yep. So if, uh, as soon as we get out over that big blue lake there, and the engine quits, uh, we should be able to crash near one of those islands. <laughs> That's my plan. So. Shorter swim. Yeah. Shorter swim. Okay, well, we'll start going now, I guess. So, Dean's in charge. If this, if I'm this, not in charge of nothing. If this all goes bad. Uh, yeah, so we thought we'd better record this because I don't have a flight, flight recorder, flight data recorder, <laughs> or cockpit voice recorder. So. Ah, it's been running like a champ, non stop for since dry, not even so much as a hiccup. Good Raven, good Raven. Good Raven. Oh, so there you can see the trans The highway's down there, it's got some traffic on it. Want to go this side, Bill? You can get a better shot of Blind River. No. Oh, look at that, there's the beautiful town of Blind River. It's kind of actually, this is a pretty drive through there too, right? You can just see out on the lake. I've, uh, like you said, I've Googled the hell out of this before, so I'm sort of familiar with it, but yeah. uh, it's a different scene than in person. Absolutely. Alright, here we go. We're going out, out over the, 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 the big drink of water here. North Channel of Lake Huron. North Channel of Lake Huron. So, all in, I think it's about uh, six or seven miles across there. So. From mainland to mainland, of course, there's several islands in the... Uh, several islands between here and the other side, so we're, we're going to be alright. And then we're going to 
re-intercept our uh, track. It's going to take us right to Gore Bay. Are you going to head straight for this island here? Or do you want to get over this point right away? You're driving. I think we're doing fine. Well, there you can see how far it is over to shore. And uh, we still got a few islands underneath us. We're not quite feet wet yet, but almost feet wet. So it's like to fly for the Navy, I guess. <laughs> Emmett's still smiling. <laughs> and a boy, Emmett. We were airborne at uh, 10.20. We've been over airborne for an hour and 10 minutes. And we're uh, six minutes out, so... Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> I did say about a 150, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I think I have airport in sight. I'm not sure. Okay, Corvée traffic. Let me switch your frequency. Corvée is a mandatory frequency. 122.8. Yeah. Corvée traffic, RV6 is going to help my Bravo. It's 11 miles to the north, north, northwest of uh, Corvée. Just coming over the channel. Just starting our descent through 5,300 feet to descend to the field. Look at friendly traffic in the Corvée circuit. Look out my Bravo. I don't know if anybody can hear this on the video there because it's noisy in the aircraft, but it's not too bad. Um, here we are currently, uh, we're just crossing the North Channel, and this is uh, Manitoulin Island right in front of us. And our destination airport is about five minutes ahead in uh, Gore Bay. So, we got uh, Dean and Captain Bill, Captain Bill at, at the controls. Once again, to pull off a fine, uh, we're going to pull off a fine. Uh, landing here in Gore Bay, and uh, we're gonna go for lunch. Have a good day. See you soon. Let's see if we can land without being in the airplane. What's <laughs> the runways in Gore Bay? We got uh, 0523, and we got 1129. 1129 is the big one. What's the wind look like? It's doing? It looks bloody calm, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, you're gonna do a midfield flyover? I think I'm gonna cross midfield to join the left downwind for two nights. Let's see what Gourmet weather says. Wind is 260 at 6. 29. We use 29. That's what I was going to say. We use 29. Should be pretty much right on the nose a little, a little bit. Yeah, it'll be on me, alright. Gourmet traffic, RV6 Gulf of Hellman Bravo is 5.5 uh, from north of the field, just descending through 3500. Right across midfield to join our left downwind for 29. For a full stop. Gulf of Mike Bravo. Thanks, Bill, for the bump. It's getting a little bumpy out here. Yeah. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh. <laughs> Spilling water all over the place. Well, we just had a minor, minor technical difficulty there with it. My, my hip was getting wet. <laughs> no, you were peeing your pants? I thought so. Anyway, that's Corby. That's Corby. We're just going to turn it out. Yeah. Corby traffic will tell my bubble is uh, two to the north of the field. Uh, 1,800. It's going to cross the field to try to left downwind. Corby. So let's uh, have a look if we can see a windsock on the way over. I'm sure, this is Gorbay. This is Gorbay. <laughs> yeah. Gorbay traffic hotel, Mike Bravo's crossing midfield, uh, joining left down wind. Three nine, full stop. I'm not seeing a um, windsock. I see one there. Yeah. Do you? Right, on, right by the basses there. Oh yeah. There. Yeah. 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 It's pretty much right down the runway. Yep. Yeah, there's one at this end too. It's about the same. It's pretty close to the middle. Corby traffic hotel, Mike Bravo is at midfield downwind for left side for 2 9. Alright, we're down under 100 miles an hour. I can start putting some problems out. There's a first notch and two, two notches of flap. We're going to be tripped up here. Might be a little, a little bit bumpy, but. Bill, I must say that is probably the nicest one you've done since I've been with you. <laughs> that wasn't bad, okay. No, yep, I'll take that all day. No, we're not done yet. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, this thing's still flying until the wheels are at the chops. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Can it be for me? Yes, absolutely. It, can. it is a little bit warm down here. It's tropical. It is. It is it tropical. It is fresh. There we go. 
So we made it to Gore Bay. This is the uh, second new airport in the logbook for Raven on this day, uh, day one of the trip. We went into the, uh, the Gore Bay terminal. We met, met Robert, a wonderful fellow there. He uh, set us up with the uh, Gore Bay courtesy van. So we went into Gore Bay for lunch. The Gore Bay airport has a nice little terminal and it's GA friendly. Lots of room for parking and courtesy wheels to go to town. Dean and I went to town and went to Purvis's Fish and Chips down by the marina for lunch. It was a real nice place to go for lunch. The food was good, service was great, views were nice too. And then back to the airport. All right, we've had lunch in Gourmet. We have been fed. Uh, we're all fed up. We're all fed up. They give us the airport van there to uh, to uh, take a run into town, which was nice of them. Uh, and uh, so we give them a, a little donation for the operation of that uh, particular uh, piece of equipment. So we're going to file a flight plan. We're going to climb in Raven, and we're going to head uh, east, pretty much straight east, uh, to Pembroke. Pembroke's the next stop on this uh, tour. So uh, I think we I think we're ready to roll. Are you ready to roll? I'm ready to roll. All right. I guess we're ready to roll. Let's get up high. I, you never thought you'd hear me say that. Hey, let's get up high when we get some cooler air. <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe the lack of oxygen is finally getting to him. Just as we were taxiing out, I received a call from the London Flight Service Centre with an updated weather brief to be on the lookout for thunderstorms on or near our route to Pembroke. One of the benefits of filing a VFR flight plan is that the Flight Service Centre will know your route and will call you to advise of any significant weather phenomenons on your route that have developed. Traffic, we'll tell my back tracking, one, one. You can never get used to remembering all the numbers. Another really nice feature about the Bose A20 headset is the Bluetooth feature. Uh, phone calls uh, through the headset are remarkably clear, and uh, I would have never got that call without the, without the Bluetooth capability of the headset. Next stop, Pembroke, Ontario. With any luck? With any luck, yep. Weather permitting, bring it home. Yeah. So here we are rolling on takeoff runway 11 in Gore Bay. It's a little after 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and the temperatures by this time had got quite high, and the humidity was rather high as well. So I'm really seeing a bit of a drop in the takeoff performance. Uh, compared to a cooler day, so the, the warm temperatures are making a difference in the performance for sure. The density altitude on this takeoff was just about 4,000 feet. The climb to 7,500 feet took me longer than I was used to. With two guys, our baggage, and full of gas, the hot, humid temps made a real dent in my climb performance. I was also flying a bit faster than my best rate of climb speed, uh, more of a cruise climb to keep the engine temps a little bit cooler. What altitude did you file for? 75. Another perk of flying up to 7,500 feet was not only to save some gas, but to enjoy some of the cooler air up there. The flight from Gore Bay to Pembroke took us a bit south of the direct path. 
There's a big Canadian Forces base at Petawawa, and with it, there's a pretty big chunk of restricted airspace. I used Round Lake as a waypoint on this trip, and we stayed a little bit south to avoid some big uh, CBs that were developing along the route. Thanks again to the London FSS dude who gave us a call and a uh, heads up about the weather en route. We saw a few of those thunderstorms developing off to the northeast of our track, but uh, we managed to stay in pretty smooth air for the whole flight. Here's the turn over Round Lake and lining us up for Petawawa. Can you see the field yet? No. Yeah, it's over there. Point your nose that way, you think. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yep. Oh, I see where you're looking. That's some ugly weather to the west. Yeah, that's raining right there that for sure. Pouring rain. But I'm looking at the way it's going, that means our wind's going that way, right? Well, yeah, but these storm cells are supposed to be going that way. Hamburg traffic, go down my travel in the zone, uh, 2000, uh, we're about uh, 4.2 miles to the uh, southwest of the field at 2000 feet, and down right across midfield, and going to left downwind. All right, folks, hang on, we're going to land. Had a wall of traffic, I'll tell my belt was a mile and a half to the west of the field, uh, circuit height, we're going to be crossing midfield. Keep your eyes peeled for a windsock. I'm looking. Okay, I'm seeing one, there's one just at the end of this runway. One at the end of this runway, and they're both just hanging there. Yeah, there's virtually no wind right now. Yeah, that's where Browns is over there, that's all his complex. So. Hey, but traffic, I'll tell my belt was turning a midfield downwind for one seven, that's fine. Uh, we can start slowing this airplane down. There's all the flops. What's that thing coming straight down? See that line? <laughs> yeah, shut up. Pepper, Capo, Capo, Mike Bravo, turning final 17. Full stop. Looks like a little mini tornado water spout or something. A little forward slip here. A little bit of a crosswind there, but not yeah. that. Gusty more than anything, I would think, eh? Yeah. Can I open the hatch now? You can open the hatch now, please. <laughs> please. Well, there we are. We have landed. Made it successfully. Petawawa. Remember Ontario. Petawawa slash whatever. And uh, yeah, it looks like we just beat that big, ugly old rain cloud, eh? Yeah, it's a good thing it wasn't going over top. Better hurry up so we're not unpacking in the pouring rain. Yeah. And uh, Petawawa traffic. Hotel we'll Mike Bubbles now to clear the active. Okay, where do you want to go? I don't know. Nose it in here and then we'll just ask. Worst case, Ontario is we just spin her around, right? Yeah. All right, here we are in Pembra. We made it. All the way across the great province of Ontario. Um, just uh, just past those trees is the Ottawa River and on the other side of that is Quebec. So that's about as close to being across the province as you can get. Dean has just vanished into the terminal here to uh, see where we can tie down and park the airplane for the night. So that's day one, a trip across Ontario. Made it all the way to Pembroke from Dryden. The uh, weather cooperated for the most part. Dean's buddy uh, Glenn came picked us up, gave us a ride back to his place where he uh, put us up in his camper for the night. That was our accommodations. Stay tuned to the next episode of the channel for the next part of the tour where we go to... Next stop, our prior. Well, here we are, we're at uh, Gatineau. We're at Carp. Uh, landed in Lindsay, getting gas in Gore Bay. Rockcliffe Airport. Uh, we're sitting on the ground here at uh, Wingham, Hanover right. Airport. We made it to Hanover. Welcome to Eatonville. So hit that like button, subscribe, and be sure to tune in next time for our Southern Ontario tour.